tonight we've gathered together for a story. In the world of Grey Bobby, this faithful puppy and his sister Betty the Bookworm venture out once more to learn all they can about the God who made them. Let's settle in for another bedtime devotional with Pastor Zach. Summer had begun and it was camp season for Grey Bobby and his friends. Most of the kids from Grey Bobby and Betty's school spent much of their summer at Camp Chuckleberry. Gray Bobby and Betty said their goodbyes to their parents at camp, got their supplies all tucked away in their cabins, and met their friends at the main lodge. I'm so excited! I'm in a cabin of old jackrabbits! I can't wait for the long talks, the games, and all the fun! That sounds pretty lively, Hopscotch. But with all those activities, Wendy planned to get some sleep. Sleep? We're at camp! There's no time to sleep! There's too much fun to be had! How's your cabin, Betty? Well... It was nice and quiet. I was supposed to be bunkmates with a nice panda named Priscilla. We were writing each other the last few weeks, but she ended up having to cancel her camp plans. Her family is heading overseas instead. So you get a bunk yourself? Sweet! Well, (laughs) not really. They assigned me another bunkmate. Who is it? Hey, losers. Oh, you're kidding. Barbara? Oh, yeah. Look, I'm not happy about sharing a space with a little grub worm either, but the cabin I wanted wasn't available. Oh, no room in the glamour hut with the rest of the prima donnas, yakety? No, they were full. So they put me in the oobs leaf lover cabin. At that moment, Atticus Armadillo, the director of Camp Chuckleberry, stood before them to get their attention. He cleared his throat and began his speech in his thick drawl. <clears throat> Hello, campers, and welcome to another year at Camp Chuckleberry. We're just over the moon that you've decided to spend your summer with us. Now, just a few words to the wise. We like to have fun around here, but it's best to stick to the simple rules we've laid down. If you do that, you'll be all right. Your camp counselors will share those rules with you. Now, let me introduce our activities director, Seymour Rivers. A slender otter with a pinched expression, a clipboard, and a whistle around his neck took to the podium. Thank you, Director Atticus. Now, when it comes to activities, I am in charge here. And like Atticus said, we have to play by the rules, and I have a lot of them for you to memorize. Now, Seymour, come on. You're scaring them. But Atticus, we've got to keep things in order. Seymour, I just said their cabin counselors are going to give them the rules. Now, don't go get them all rattled. Look, he means well, kids. He just takes his job a little seriously. Now, y'all go get washed up. Talk to your cabin counselors. We'll get you some vittles. And then you'll go out for your first activity. The campers did exactly that. They went back to their cabins and listened to the rules. Betty noted that Barbara was not paying attention at all. Then after a big lunch, they were off to their individual activities. Red, Gray Bobby, and Betty ended up at the rock climbing area after lunch. I am very glad I'm not grouped with Bart for this activity. Why is that, Red? Uh, you know, yeah, he's got this whole thing about him and the Alps and mountain climbing. If I have to listen to one more of his climbing stories, I, I just don't think I can handle it. Okay, campers, it's time for our rock climbing class. Now, rock climbing is dangerous, so before we head up this beginner 100-foot cliff... We want to make sure you've received instruction. Before Seymour Rivers could begin his lecture on the proper way to scale a cliff, there was an outburst from a young mountain goat named Monty. Oh, excuse me. Who is that kid? His name is Monty Malloy. He's in my cabin. Oh, Malloy? Malloy is in... All of the Malloys you've ever met? Yeah, apparently he's from overseas. Europe, I think? I hear he's related to the actor who plays Super Sergeant Connor. That's a Malloy? Man, that family even plays police officers in movies. I suppose he has a future in law enforcement ahead of him then. But just when they thought Monty would be the chief of all rule followers and Seymour Rivers' prize camper, something quite different happened. What is it, Monty? What is there to learn about climbing? What? Sure. I mean, I'm a mountain goat, so it's in my blood. I pine for a mountain climb. And before Seymour Rivers could stop him, Monty, without equipment, began climbing the 100-foot cliff. Hey, stop that! Mr. Malloy, you aren't following the rules! 
Come down from there right now. Right this instant. But it was too late. Monty was already at the top of the cliff and doing a little dance. Who's the goat? I'm the goat. Who is the goat? Monty is the goat. He's good, yeah? The campers all cheered. Seymour Rivers, however, did not. And he let it be known. Now listen here, Monty. And all of you kids. There are rules for a reason. You can't just take off and climb a cliff without instruction. Without tools. It's not... <clears throat> It's not wise. Aha, but did you not see me do exactly that? That is not the point. The point is that it is unsafe. Herr Rivers, when I feel the fire of desire to climb a mountain, I must climb. It's what mountain goats were made to do. He's definitely not like his uncles and cousins, is he? Not at all. Kinda. Well, I don't know. He's cool. Yeah. No, no, no. Just because he could climb that mountain without equipment doesn't mean he's cool. I mean, he could have really gotten hurt. Ah, oh, come on, Betty. You sound like Seymour rules over there. Come on, it's summer camp. Loosen up. But Betty couldn't loosen up. One of the rules their cabin counselors had shared with them was to follow the directions of your counselors. Monty Malloy had to pay a visit to Atticus, but soon he had rejoined the group. He played by the rules for the rest of the day. That is, until the next day's climbing lesson. For this lesson, a few other groups joined in, including Bart's. Is this not the best? It reminds me of my time in the Alps. Have I told you about my time in the Alps, Red? Many, many, many times. But I get the idea you're going to Tell me more about it anyway. Yeah, the Alps are so beautiful. They make my heart go a pity de pat, pity de pat, a pity de pat. They are alive with the sound. Let me guess, of music? No, Pfft. of mountain lions. Why would you think there was music? Do you think the lions compose little tunes? Ah! Okay, listen up, kids. You mastered climbing the beginner cliff. Now here we are at the... intermediate cliff. With this sort of cliff... With this sort of cliff, you just climb. Wait, who is that kid? That is Monty Malloy. And once again, Monty, without a plan and without safety equipment, started climbing the cliff. <laughs> Mr. Malloy! Mr. Malloy! Monty! That kid is the goat! Well, that's pretty obvious. Not a goat, the goat. Greatest of all time. I have seen some mountain climbing in my day, but that was poetry. Yeah, it was pretty cool. Agree with him. It's dangerous. It's actually kind of funny, especially when Mr. Rivers gets so upset. It's not funny, Gray Bobby. What if he fell? But he didn't fall. He did, however, have to go back and see Atticus again. That time, Monty got cleanup duty after dinner to remind him to listen to all the instructions of his counselors. Monty behaved himself for the better part of the next two weeks. But on that Friday, there was a mountain climbing competition. And Monty, of course, couldn't help himself. He had to enter. Seymour Rivers gave him a lecture and told him the only way he'd let Monty enter is if he followed the rules. Monty agreed. On the day of the competition, only two campers dared to take on the tallest cliff, Mount Gloom. Bart and Monty. It was 300 feet, and at the top, there was a little bell. Whoever made it to the top first and rang the bell would be the winner. I did not know they would let Monty enter. I do not like my chances. I don't worry about it. Just stay focused. Remember, Monty has to abide by the rules. Uh-huh. Sure he will. Okay, Barb. Monty, are you ready? Yeah. Yeah. All right. Just remember, y'all follow the rules. Take your time and... But before Atticus could finish, Monty bolted for the mountain. 
without any equipment. I pine for a mountain climb. There he goes. Atticus, aren't you going to stop him? <sighs> Some people have to learn the hard way, Seymour. Oh no, there he goes. I will never be able to catch up. As Bart started up the mountain, using the equipment and following the rules, Monty zipped up the side of the cliff. The campers cheered, and Monty kept climbing. Bart was sure he had lost. But as Monty reached for the rope on the bell, his foot missed, and he started to fall. The campers all gasped and watched in horror. Atticus, however, didn't seem concerned. Atticus, why are you so calm? Settle down, Seymour. It's going to be all right. Atticus whistled, and from the top of the mountain, a large eagle swooped down, grabbed Monty in his talons, and brought him safely back to the ground, setting him right in front of Atticus' armadillo. Well, 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 Monty. Looks like your haste finally caught up with you. You should be glad you aren't hurt. I am so sorry. When I see a mountain, I lose all sense of reason. If Uncle Greybilly were here, he'd probably be reciting a proverb right about now. As it so happens, I graduated from the school of Uncle Greybilly's favorite proverbs. He was my cabin counselor here when I was a youngin. And one proverb he mentioned to me back then comes to mind now. Proverbs 19.2 Desire without knowledge is not good, and whoever makes haste with his feet misses his way. Now, if that wasn't just lived out right before us today, Monty, just because you have a desire to climb that mountain doesn't mean you should just run off and do it. Because quick decisions like that can lead to a big fall. That's called impulsiveness. And it's impulsiveness that is rarely, if ever, wise. We need to ask Jesus to help us not to be impulsive and not to follow our desires rather than following careful planning. And we know that when we follow our desires rather than Jesus, well, we just end up in a real pickle. I did it! Me! Bart, after climbing up the right way, reached the bell at the top of Mount Gloom and rang it in victory. Oh, it's high up here. I should not have looked down. And afterwards, they all had cake for dinner to celebrate. Except for Monty, who was washing dishes so it would help him to remember. Desire without knowledge is not good. And whoever makes haste with his feet misses his way. What did we learn? Now, hold up there. I think they got the point, Mr. Narrator. Impulsiveness can lead to a right bad end. We need Jesus to help us think things through with wisdom instead of looking before we leap. Perhaps we should just cut to the prayer because the prayer is the power to give us the want to. Agreed, Mr. Atticus. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, help us not to make quick decisions based on our desires. But instead, give us the want to, the desire to follow the lead of Jesus. Give us the wisdom and the knowledge to look before we leap. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Now let's quiet our minds and our hearts with a good night song. Now hear the Lord's blessing over you. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord cause his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. 
May the Lord turn his face towards you and give you his peace. Amen. Hey, Mom and Dad. If you want each week's new devotional automatically sent to your podcast downloads, be sure to subscribe. See you next week. Oh, he's high, oh, high up here. High up here. Echo! Echo! My heart goes. A pitta pat, pitta pat. A pitta pitta pat, pitta pat. Pitta pat, pitta pat. For the mountain. Hello? Hello?